everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this is my YouTube channel, Sharal Thinks, where I talk about all things health anxiety related. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do so, so you can keep up to date with my videos and give this video a big thumbs up at the end if you liked it. So um, it's been a while since I've done a video on the three letter disease that we all fear so much. Um, Although I must say I don't I don't fear it anymore, um, and I just wanted to you know I don't want to get into the nitty gritty details of of too much, but I just wanted to just put out like a reassurance video that maybe you guys can watch when the thoughts are starting to take over. Um, I remember how how scary it was. I I lived in terror for months, um, and I and I really believed it was never going to go away. Um, what we need to remember with ALS um, is yes, it's a horrible and unfortunate disease and my heart truly goes out to the people who suffer from it, right? Um, there's no making it pretty, you know, and, and I know that some therapists, they attempt to get the person to see that what they're worried about is not that bad, but I'm here to say it's a terrible disease, but you don't have it, right? And, you know, many of us, many, many, many of us with anxiety will twitch and get lots of strange neurological symptoms, right? And we go on Google, we Google it, you know, twitching, blah, blah, blah. And what comes up is all of these scary diseases, right? And then we, we end up creating this really strong narrative, this story, and we go around collecting evidence as to why we think we have it, right? So we might start off with twitching and we Google it and we, we read about ALS and then we read the other symptoms. Then maybe our hands start feeling weak, or we get a bit clumsy or, you know, we start to look at photos of the backs of our legs and we think, oh, I think my left leg looks smaller. And then we start to notice things that we've never paid attention to, like ever, ever. And all of a sudden we collect this evidence. We literally go around putting things in the ALS box, right? until it overflows and that we become absolutely entirely convinced that we have it. Uh, no amount of reassurance is enough. We end up reading all of the scary forums and trying to find these links and we try desperately to problem solve because the uncertainty is the biggest part, right? That, that's, the, that's the killer is the uncertainty. And we might go and get an EMG and we get an EMG done and then we think, well, what if I had it too early? And it's exhausting. It's exhausting, right? And this is a disease that, you know, is pretty rare. It's not, you know, one in a million rare, but it's a pretty rare disease. It's not nowhere near as, as common as cancer or other illnesses. So it's a rare disease. And, you know, like most diseases, it mostly affects older people. Yet the majority of people that I see worrying about ALS are under 50. And we are the, the group of people um, that we're in the prime of our life, right? Where this is the time where we probably shouldn't need to worry as much about our health. We should be going out, having families, exploring, living our best life whilst we're so healthy. Um, but what health anxiety does to us is it robs us of that. It robs us of these golden years where, you know, we don't have to think about these things. Um, and we end up completely debilitated by our anxiety, utterly convinced that we have uh, this rare disease, even rarer in our age group. Um, and it destroys us, right? And this is what happened to me. And we get caught up in the whole, like, you know, well, what if I, my, what if my, you know, I have ALS and it's just, it's, it's different. Or what if my twitches start first or, but look at this website, this says this and this says that. And we just get so tangled in it all, right? And it's so confusing because one page will say this and another page will say that. And we go on the forums and we go on the benign physication forums and, oh, well, look at this guy, you know, and it just, it, we just become so absorbed by it, so absorbed that it becomes exhausting. Um, and we don't know what's right, you know, we go and see a neurologist and we don't believe them even though they're the professional and we end up thinking that we know more than them. I understand, I was one of these people, like I, 
I used to think I knew more than the neurologist, you know, and I would go in like trying to educate him, right? And what we often do is that we, when we have these appointments is we ask like really leading questions and, you know, we'll say things like, um, but you'd expect there to be, uh, you know, muscle atrophy, atrophy by now, right? And, and we like, we push these, we, we back these neurologists like into a corner where they have to basically say to us, well, I can't tell you that you're 100% safe. Um, and then we feel worse, right? We feel worse because they haven't given us the exact answer that we wanted, even though I don't even think we know what answer that we want. It's like we want some kind of futuristic Star Trek technology that can scan us and we'll know exactly what's wrong with us. But in fact, even people with health anxiety would probably doubt that. Um, but we're worrying about a disease that is rare. Can it affect younger people? Yeah, it can. But the chances of that happening is so slim. So, so slim. And you know, when it comes to diseases, what neurologists do, or what every you know specialist does, but let's just take neurologists as an example. When a person comes in and they have various symptoms, what the neurologist will do is they will try and look for a pattern, right? So like Parkinson's, it has a pattern. It has a set of symptoms and it's usually like, okay, it starts like this and then, 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 then this happens, right? And then they can look at that and they can say, okay, that sounds a lot like Parkinson's. And then they might do additional tests to confirm that, yeah? Uh, the same with ALS, the same with MS, all of the things. The reason why the majority of people who go and see a neurologist find that their neurologist is not concerned is because they don't fall into a specific pattern, right? These people go in and they say, you know, I have widespread twitching. Uh, yes, yeah, some days they're worse than other, they come and go. And yeah, then I'm getting cramping in my foot and my right hand, I think it has atrophy. And it's kind of like all over the place. And so the neurologist looks at the person, they take their age and other things into consideration. And then they say, this doesn't fit a pattern. This doesn't look like anything. It doesn't look like this. It doesn't look like that. So what they're left with is, okay, what we think this is, is this is your anxiety, or this is somatic, right? This is, these are somatic symptoms. Um, and I used to get very frustrated by that because, you know, I was told time and time again, you know, well, maybe you've got functional neurological disorder. The, or maybe this is just somatic disorder. You know, this is just your anxiety. And back then, I was so sure that I would fit into one of those patterns that I couldn't understand why they weren't seeing what I was seeing, right? Because for me, it was like, well, yeah, like maybe I don't have like the typical cause, but maybe mine's different. And we get ourselves caught up in that. Well, what if mine does start widespread and I'm just going to be one of those really, really rare cases, even though it would be super rare for somebody of my age to get it anyway. So health anxiety knows no end. It will keep going and going and going and going and going, you know, and even though we're told the facts time and time again, well, you know, weakness starts first. You wouldn't have widespread twitching and it wouldn't come and go and blah, blah, blah. We still somehow believe our anxiety and we still somehow are convinced that we have it. And so what do we do with that, right? What do we do with that? How do we manage that? There's loads of ways, first and foremost, um, but it's a choice. It's it's a choice. It's changing our behaviours, right? Because what I always uh, do with my clients is I get them to realise that there's no point trying to change the symptoms or the thoughts. You can't. If we could, we'd all be we'd all be grand, right? We'd all be amazing. The only area of control that you have is the way that you react and respond to those two things. And those, that is something that we do have control over, something that we can change. So I'm always saying to people that as hard as it is, you have to change your behavior, right? To change those other two things that you don't like. So I guess I just wanted to, I, I wanted to do this video just as, just to, to kind of, to show you that I, I've been here, where you're at right now. I know what you're thinking, I know where your head's at. I know that you think you're gonna be that rare, crazy case. I know that you've read this and I know that you've looked at the ALS forums and I know how insane your brain feels to you right now. And I guess I just wanted to say, sit here and say that I, I, came, I came out the other side and I didn't have ALS. 
you know, when I had twitching, I had weakness, you know, I, well, I, I really did have twitching, but like I, I had what I thought was real weakness, you know, I, I thought I had atrophy in my hands and, you know, my left calf, like it's not the same as my right and, you know, I had a scalloped tongue and my tongue was twitching and I was drooling, I was choking, I was noticing that my, my pitch and my voice was different. Um, I had it all. I had what I thought was every single symptom, every single symptom, and I didn't have it. I didn't have it, right? Um, so I just wanted to say, hang on in there. Time is the biggest healer. And you will come out of this. You won't stay in it forever. Like, I know it feels that way, but you won't. You will come out of it. You have to just survive until then, but you have to help yourselves. You have to. Because every day that you check, every day that you Google, every day that you're doing this thing over and over again, you're just reminding yourself of the fear and you won't stop until you stop your behaviours, okay? And I know it's hard. Like, I'm not trying to say it like it's easy. It's the hardest thing in the world. Like, it truly, truly is. But you've got to start somewhere. So, give this video a thumbs up if it's reassured you or made you feel better even for 10 seconds. Um, I am currently taking on more coaching clients. Um, I, up until recently, I had about a four to five week waiting list, but there are a few openings. So in the link, uh, in, sorry, in the description of this uh, video, I'll, I'll pop the link uh, where you can apply for coaching with me um, and I'll get back to you ASAP. Um, if you want to have, uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram where I post health anxiety reels, uh, you can find me at Sheryl Thinks. So the exact same name is on YouTube as the same on on Instagram, um, where there's just more more content, shorter content, uh, a bit more light-hearted content on there. Um, just trying to raise health anxiety awareness. But um, please feel free to leave a comment, give a thumbs up, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care.